Hi, this is Mr. Max. Welcome to my third part on vectors um, for AS level students. So, of course, um, tomorrow I'm going to post something that has to deal with parallel vectors, a little bit more examples, and examination style questions. So, first, um, by now you should all know what vectors are. Vector is anything that has a magnitude and direction. So, I put two sort of columns here for you to see the difference between what is referred to as a scalar quantity. It only has magnitude, it does not have direction. Like for example, temperature. If I say temperature, you can say for example, just 40 degrees. You can't say 40 degrees west, it doesn't make any sense, so it's just a scalar um, quantity. Uh, and then obviously distance is another one. So the difference then, things like force and velocity, um, displacement, acceleration, they are all, they are all vectors. Um, force, you have, let's say, 100 newtons of force, and uh, with respect to 30 degrees from, let's say, the x-axis. Um, so that definitely gives you a vector quantity. Then, if you're just saying distance, 20 meters uh, is just a distance, but the moment you talk about displacement, that is a change in position, that is distance with direction. So, for example, one can be saying 40 meters east. Okay? Uh, and then you have, obviously, the one between speed and velocity. Speed being a scalar quantity just tells you how fast something moves, where velocity tells you how fast and where. So, it's speed with direction. Displacement is distance with direction. So, it's a vector. Mass, however, is something else, so I can say mass of something is 30 kilograms, where um, if you look at something like acceleration, acceleration is how fast the velocity is changing. So vectors, they can be written in different ways, so this is just notes that you can go through. Of course, um, we draw directed line segments with little arrows on top, and then the lengths are their magnitudes, like what you're seeing here, for example, at... Um, here we sometimes also use um, uh, bolded bold face letters okay like a v or whatever the case may be now since you can't do those bold face things that is why if you were talking about vector a you put a little squiggly um, uh, underneath that some countries some people are putting uh, uh, on top there but whatever your notation is as long as you know that you're referring to a certain vector then, if you multiply a vector by scalar, because a scalar can be it's just an ordinary number, of course, it can be negative as well, it just affects the length. No? Um, a negative number reverses the direction of the vector. So, for example, when you are halving it, you know, when you're multiplying a vector by a half, is what you're doing is you're just halving that vector, but it's still the same direction. However, if you were to multiply a vector by a scalar, let's say, of negative 2, the resultant vector is twice as long, but it now will be in the opposite direction, or the arrow will go in the reverse direction. So, well, enough with notes. You can obviously um, pause the video over here if it is that you need to take that in and uh, write down the notes if you have to. Right, uh, I want to do a little bit of questions with regard to perpendicular vectors. So I'll do uh, one or two, and then I'll do some more examples. On, 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 on vectors. So when we are talking about two vectors A and vectors B and the angle between them is 90 degrees, knowing from our formula that uh, cos theta is equal to A dot B, the dot product of AB, divided by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of vector B, where the dot product is given by that and the magnitude is given by that. So here's the thing. If theta, the angle here is 90 degrees, and you press theta, 90, cos theta, of course 90 degrees right in your calculator, you get zero. So effectively, this side of the fraction becomes zero, as I indicated here. And if you were to sort of cross multiply, you realize that a, the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b will therefore disappear. So that we are only having the dot product of the vectors that will give you zero. Using that concept, we are going to look at the few examples. So, are the vectors A, B perpendicular? So, for you to prove that vectors are perpendicular, you have to have that the dot product of these vectors should give you zero. 
Right. So um, that should be very straightforward. So let us see if we can uh, we can get that. Okay. So um, remember, if you were to dot those things, you can use. I've shown in my previous video when I was doing a question on in maybe an exams how to use to find a dot product of uh, of that using um, a calculator. But of course, I'm not going to do that. On this one but you can refer back to that one if you want to do that so a dotted of b to give you zero um, that's going to be multiplying the components so three times one three being here and one being here adding that so you're going to have so essentially what i'm doing obviously is this part over here okay and then you have the component negative four so negative four times negative two and then adding that with 2 times negative 3. Well, once you do all of that, you get an answer of 5, and 5 is not equal to 0. So you can actually conclude this very straight, simple uh, forward exam example by saying that uh, vector A and uh, vector B are not perpendicular. Okay, I have another example. So let's go to that question. Of course, I just brought that stuff there. So I'll suggest you pause it and you also write it down if you don't have it. So you can always know. They say find the exact values. Now I added the word values. So most of the time you're not going to get values for plural that will now tell you exactly that you need more than one answer. So they will just write value in any case. Of x for which these vectors are, so this is a fact they say that these vectors are perpendicular, and since they are perpendicular, that uh, if you were to find a dot product of this, it should give you zero. Um, so that means you multiply. So I'm just going to highlight, so I'm going to say 2x times x. If you multiply that, you get 2x squared, all right? And then if you were to multiply... Um, this minus x over here times this positive one that is there so that is going to give me only minus x if you were to see that and the next one that i'm going to find is uh, perhaps a little bit of uh, taking this one that is over here multiplying it by negative three and if i do that I get negative 3. So this is equal to 0. So again, this becomes a quadratic that you should be able to solve. And this one factorizes. So it factorizes 2x minus 3 will be in one bracket. Then obviously the other bracket will be x plus 1. Whatever you do to solve this equation, please do it. Um, again, it's a straightforward equation. So you let h bracket. If you have the product of two factors giving you naught, it implies that one or the other is equal to to not so in this case 2x is equal to positive 3 or x is equal to negative 1 um, the other one we still have to find the final answer so here x is equal to 3 halves and essentially these are the answers that we are looking for for that question so you use the the, the concept of perpendicular uh, vectors by looking at the dot product to give you zero and then sometimes you might end up with a quadratic for you to find the values right so i've got further questions on vectors so this has um, not necessarily questions on, uh, on 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 perpendicular vectors but i just think i put three more questions there just to see if you're getting um used to the concept of vectors of course i'm going to look at three or four more questions tomorrow and then uh, i think my series on vectors will will end uh, this one says, find the acute angle between vectors A that is represented by the components 3 in the i direction to j direction and so on and so on, and vectors B as you can see it. So the acute angle, very important that you do understand this concept. So you have got a vector here, um, you have another one that goes over here. So what they are saying is, we are supposed to find the acute angle. Now it could be this one. Um, I am not 100% sure. We'll see what the case may be. If we are getting an answer that is, say, for example, uh, on this side over here, an answer that is more than 90 degrees, that will be, let me say, um, alpha. 
if the alpha is answer that is more than 90 degrees, then obviously it's an, it's an obtuse angle, then we need to subtract that obtuse angle from 180 in order for us to find the acute angle, depending on what our scenario will be over here. So we obviously also know that uh, cos theta is the uh, vector A dotted to vector B. All of these uh, should be um, multiplied by the magnitudes of vectors A and vectors B respectively. Okay, and um, so let me write down what my vector A is. So vector A in vector form is 3, 2, negative 1. And vector B in vector form will be 2 from here, right? Negative 4 as well as 3. Okay, so remember when you find the dot product, you simply, um, when you find the dot product, A dotted of B will just be A sub 1, B sub 1 plus A sub 2, B sub 2 plus A sub 3, um, B sub 3. So that means it's going to be the product, the sum of the product of the components, so to speak. So it's going to be, uh, in this particular case, you're going to have 3 times 2, okay? And then we're also going to, let me just write it down. So it's going to be 3 times 2 added with the next one, obviously, is going to be... Um, 2 times negative 4. So I'm just going to write that down as well. So that is 2 times negative 4. And uh, you should add that to um, perhaps negative uh, 1 times 3 and negative uh, 1 times 3. So it's going to be negative 1 times 3. And that whole answer over there, you can obviously grab your calculator to find out what that answer is. So it's 6. Um, minus 8 minus 3. Now that is 6 minus 11. So 6 minus 11 is negative 5. Okay, so now I know what the dot product is. Um, I now need to find the magnitude of the vectors. So I'm going to find the magnitude of vector A. The magnitude of vector A would be obviously using Pythagoras. So it's 3 squared plus um, Let's just go back to what vector A was. It's 3, 2, negative 1, 3, 2, negative 1. So 2 squared plus negative 1 squared. Of course, there's no need to put that minus there. Um, let me just also write down the magnitude of vector B. So let's just quickly go back and see what vector B is. 2, negative 4, 3, 2, negative 4, 3. So that's 2 squared plus negative 4 squared plus 3 squared, we're going to find the square, which is make sure it's 2, negative 4, 3, and 3, 2, negative 1. Okay, good. So we can actually work it out. So this one, um, obviously, um, it's going to give me 9, plus 4, plus 1, square root. Of course, that is the square root of 14. Over here, I'm going to leave it in that form. You have uh, 4 plus 16 plus 9. So of course, this is nothing but the square root of 29. So now I have everything. I can just punch it in into my formula over here, and then I can find the angle. So and see what angle I'm going to get. Right. So anyway, I have cos theta will be um, the negative 5 that I've got over root 14 times root 29. So the inverse cosine of negative 5 over root 14 times root 29. Well, let's grab our calculator and see what we get. So we have the inverse cos. Make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. D that you can see over there. So obviously it's, um, it's negative 5. Um, well, I'm going to say divided by um, root 14 times root 29, okay, um, let's see, because I have said that, so I will put brackets there, very important so you don't end up making mistakes, well, you get 104.4, so it's 
4. So clearly this is not the acute angle. Um, since the acute angle that we need to calculate, I will say um, it's 180 minus 104, okay, because um, I'm looking for the acute angle, remember, from our question, 104.4. So I'll just grab my calculator and say, okay, 180 minus my answer, of course, that's 75.63, so 75.63. Point six degrees to one decimal place. So that is what I was looking for in that particular particular question. Right, the second question over here, they are saying if A is represented by the coordinates of 2, negative 1, and 4, B has coordinates negative 3, 2, 1, C has coordinates 5, 3, and 2, and then also we need to find the angle of the angle of the size. Now this question, I think it's best that you do it with a diagram. Okay. Um, so if you were to do a diagram, you would just have to start from the origin. Okay. Now what I did is I also um, did it on the software on GeoGebra, so you can see. So I suggest maybe you start with point. Oh, and you select any three points, perhaps A over here, perhaps a point B over there, and perhaps a point C over there. Okay, so O being the origin, because when you are given the coordinates, then the origin should be easy. So O to A, for example, will just be 2, negative 1, and 4. And uh, uh, O to B, for example, will be... Uh, negative 3, 2, and 1. And lastly, O to C, for example, will be 5, 3, 2. So um, that means it's much easier than for you to see where we need to go. So I'm just going to bring in. Um, so O to A, O to B, O to C. Okay. Um, so again, as I said, O to A, you get it by the vector 2, negative 1, 4. O to B is negative 3, 2, 1. O to C is 5, 3, and 2. So effectively, this is the triangle we are going to create. And uh, the angle that you are looking for is this particular angle over there. So I'm gonna call that my angle theta. So the vectors have to move away from that. So what you need to find, you need to find BA, and you also need to find BC in order for us to find that angle. All right, so how do you find BA? So again, using our position vector, so BA, would be the terminal point OA minus the initial point OB. So we know already what OA is, and uh, we're just going to continue writing it here. OA is 2, negative 1, 4. We also know what OB is. OB is this one here, negative 3, 2, 1. So just subtract 2 minus 9 is going to give you 5. Negative 1 minus 2, that is negative 3. And 4 minus 1, that is going to give you 3. So this is my BA. Then if I have to calculate uh, the next one, which is BC, and BC is going to be calculated by OC, vector OC, minus vector OB. Now we know already what vector OB is. So I can just as well write it down. OB was negative 3, 2, and 1. And vector OC is this one here, which is 5, 3, and 2. And of course, 5 minus minus, that is it. 3 minus 2 is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. And I just write it nicely. So at the end of the day, um, I have the vector, the resultant vector that I have here will be 8, 1, 1. So these are my B, C, and A, C, respectively. So B, A, this is 
represented by that, and BC, vector BC, is represented by that. Now that I know that, uh, I can also calculate their magnitudes um, because I am supposed to, um, and I can also dot them. So I'll be finding their magnitudes and I'll find their dot product. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll say BA dotted with BC, which is um, 5, negative 3, 3, dotted with 8, 1, 1. Okay, so 5 times 8 plus negative 3 times 1 plus 3 times 1. Of course, um, let's just grab our calculator. So we have 5 times 8, um, which is 40, minus 3, okay, plus 3, of course, it's just going to be 40. So the dot product is 40. Then I'm going to find the magnitude of the two. So I'm going to come back here. So I'm going to find the magnitude of BA. And I'm also going to find the magnitude of BC in order for me to find that. So remember BA was 5 squared plus 3 squared plus 3 squared. Let's refer back to it. Uh, that's giving me the square root of 43. Let's just go back and make sure that you see BA. Um, BA is obviously 5, negative 3, 3. So take note what I did here is I didn't put a negative here. There's no need for it. But you can do that if you want to. So you can say put a negative there. Anything you square in any case would be positive. And then the next one, obviously, that we have to find the magnitude of vector BC. So BC is represented by 811. So we're going to find the magnitude of that by simply saying 8 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. And we take the square root of all of that. So that's 64 plus 1, 65 plus 1, well, 66. So I know the dot product. I The dot product is 40. I know the magnitude. So I can find the angle there. So the angle is going to be the 40 divided by... Um, root 43 times root 66, just to make sure, 43, root 43 times root 66. And uh, this is where you're now going to use your calculator. So the angle will be the inverse cosine of 40 over uh, root 43 times root 66. Um, just grab your, go ahead and grab your calculator. So that is the inverse sine, cosine, sorry, rather, of 40. Um, divided by um, root 43 times uh, root 66. Okay, so that gives me uh, an error. Let's see, what is it? My brackets, usage of brackets. So here, because I'm doing a lot of things, I'm going to introduce another bracket. Of course, that's 41.34. So I have 41.34. So you can say, 41.3 degrees. Okay, so that is uh, the answer to that. Now, let me just go back here so I can show you what I did over there. So if I will uncheck everything, so working on a three-dimensional plane. So if obviously you have to look at that, so let's say that's the X. So if I press A, point E, you see that it's two in the X direction. It's uh, negative 1, so it goes in the y direction. Negative 1 comes sort of come this way, and then it goes up by 4. Point B is negative 3 in the x direction, and then so negative 3 the x is 1 in red, okay, 1 in red. Um, and then also you have got uh, 2 in the y direction, so if you have to look at the y direction, you can see it's 2. Okay, and then it goes up in the z direction by another 2. Okay, all right, so that's point B. Now point C again would be that. So what I did is we want to find the angle between them. So I drew the line segments that join those three. So what we're looking for is angle A, B, C. That's what we calculated, okay? So it's that particular angle there. And when you calculate that angle, you realize you get 41.34. 
like what we got in our answer before. Okay, so that is what we are talking about when we are doing that in a three-dimensional plane. All right, um, let's go back to the question. Um, you can see I still have a third question and a very last question. So this one give you time as well to sort of uh, write it down and take it all in. So this one says relative to the origins. These are examination style questions. Um, it says the position vectors of A and B are given by OA, vector OA being negative 2, 3, 1, vector OB given by 4, 1, P. So there's a missing component there. So you are supposed to find the value of P for which OA is perpendicular. So one of the things you should know that when vectors are perpendicular to each other, it implies that the dot product of them is equal to zero. So we have to find the dot product of these vectors over here, okay? So negative two, three, one dotted with uh, four, one, and p. And of course, that uh, is like negative two times four plus three times one plus one times p. Well, that should give me zero. So I'm really interested in on the right hand side there. So let me just clean up. That is going to give me negative eight over here. That is going to give me plus 3, plus p is obviously equal to 0. Negative 8 plus 3, that's negative 5 plus p. And obviously it implies that p is nothing but 5. So that took care of that particular question. Now, the last one says, find the value of p for which the magnitude of a, b. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, before we look at the, not the magnitude, the magnitude of vector a, b, rather. Um, so AB, vector AB is obviously the terminal point minus the initial point, okay? That's how you find vector AB, and uh, and this is where we need to perhaps first start off. What We know that OB is nothing but 41P, so I'm going to write that vector down. So that is 4, 1, and P, and we know that OA from our work there, OA is negative 2, 3, 1. Okay, you can see that, negative 2, 3, 1. So let me just write it down, negative, um, negative 2, 3, and 1, respectively. Okay, and let's see what we get. So we have for minus minus 2, that is the same as adding. 1 minus 3, that's obviously negative 2. And then I have P minus 1 over here. Okay, right. Now that I know that, we are told that, so now I have AB, so we are told that the magnitude, the magnitude of vector AB, we are told that it's equal to 7. So that implies that if I was to find the magnitude of AB, which is 6 squared plus minus 2 squared plus in bracket P minus 1 squared, the magnitude, obviously everything should be under the square root should give me an answer of 7. So eventually, I am going to be uh, left with a scenario um, where I need to get that stuff outside or inside the bracket. Um, or you can go ahead and get rid of this by taking the square root because the square cancel that. And so at the end of the day, I'm left with 6 squared plus negative 2 squared plus p minus 1 all squared is equal to 49, okay? That's 7 times 7. Now let's go ahead and clean this up. So this is 36 plus 4 plus, so this is p squared minus 2p plus 1. Please make sure um, that you know how to find this expansion, okay? Okay, you should know how to find that expansion. Um, please don't make unnecessary mistakes with your Algebra, so p minus 1, uh, all squared is the same as p minus 1, times p minus 1. Okay, just, just remember that. Anyway, um, so let us clean this up and see what we are ending with. So we eventually will be ending, so here uh, I get 36 plus 4, that's 40. 40 plus 1, of course that is 41. And I still have p squared minus 2p. 
and uh, and I have this 49 over here so it's p squared minus 2p um, plus 41 minus 49 equals to 0 so might just slightly be running out of space here um, let me just add a page um, let me just append a page so I'm gonna choose a blank page and say okay so right let's so just see where we are um, we are now at p squared minus 2p 41 minus 9 is minus 8 so of course here you can find this you can factorize this um, p over here p over there equals to zero so that's negative so one bracket is positive one bracket is negative so it's negative four times two is the only conditions that you're going to get a minus 2p and then also the positive or the minus 8. Now you take each bracket, let it equal to 0 because the factors of two numbers or two, um, uh, you know, will give you 0. It implies one of the factors is either equal to 0 or the other one is equal to 0. From here it becomes very straightforward, so you simply just solve this as you would solve linear equations. So p will be negative 2 or p equals to 4. So these are the solutions then to that question. Right, so you take note, it says find the value of p, right? Not like the previous questions where I probably put values because I didn't want to guide you so you can know that you must have two answers, but you should definitely know that you can expect more than one answer for this type of question. Right, so tomorrow you stand by. I am going to look at, um, obviously, uh, the last part of the series. So if you are following the Namibian syllabus, so I'm going to look at try now 16 um, in the y equals mx plus c um, to success textbook. Um, also, I'm going to look at a little bit on what is referred to as parallel vectors. Um, and then I'll just do a little bit of intro into base vectors or and or the unit vector, just so that we cover all our bases. But as it is, um, we have covered everything uh, with vectors. And I think uh, if you go through the videos and if you go through the question papers, you should be on the right path. You should not fail questions that deal with vectors. So I just want to see what the page number is with that particular try now. So try now 16 is page 246. So in the AS level textbooks, that's page 246 all the way to page 248. There's a very delicious advanced level question also take note of the time that I'm doing this stuff. So um, I'll suggest that you work through them and then you can follow. So there will be another offline lesson tomorrow. Um, perhaps we'll also look at the revision exercise and then I'll continue with the series on differentiation and integration that we have to do within this week and next week, um, which means by next week, Wednesday, we're done with the integration and differentiation so after that, I start with further tweak and further differentiation integration, um, and then the last topic. All right, so I'll be doing mostly question paper style uh, questions on that. Good luck with your studies. Hope this was very helpful. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Okay.